Welcome. O5-13. Please read this document thoroughly before making any decisions regarding the ongoing incident in your managed sector. Item. SCP-001. Object Class. Keta. Special Containment Procedures. Psychological counseling and or medication relating to anxiety disorders caused by SCP-001 are to be provided to any affected staff. MTF Kappa 10 Skynet is to be tasked with indexing all data related to communications regularly used in online astronomy communities. Specific care is to be paid to mentions of anxiety related to areas associated with SCP-001. Notable observations of the two neutron stars in proximity of SCP-001 made by the astronomy community and or reported to places of academia are to be reviewed by the anomaly's current project lead. This individual is to be granted broad authority to remove any data from public record as necessary. Both 81 Galatine and Secase Epsilon are to be considered exclusion zones. As the systems are located in Sector 13. 0513's approval is necessary before entry into these systems is allowed, even in the case of a full council vote. Description. SCP-001 is a point in space approximately 157 parsecs from Earth that, when visually observed, causes a viewer emotional distress. This distress manifests as a general and non-specific anxiety. The anxiety itself, while treatable, is long-lasting and unconnected to repeat observations of SCP-001. SCP-001 is remarkable in that it appears to be nearly equidistant to the neutron stars 81 Galatine and Secase Epsilon. One these neutron stars appear to have formed simultaneously around 1-2 million years ago. Study of these neutron stars is the source of most security breaches related to SCP-001's existence. Exploration of SCP-001 and surrounding stellar systems by the SCP-V Tolkien and SCP-V Vonnegut, whose original missions were to run from from 2063 to 2068, have led to a better understanding of the anomaly. Each of the surrounding stars appear to have at one time supported life-bearing planets and interplanetary civilizations. The minor anomalous effects related to SCP-001 appear to be amplified as distance between the observer and the anomaly decreases. What effects, if any, SCP-001 may have had on inhabited planets in orbit of the neighboring neutron stars is currently being investigated. Biological considerations of the sword stars. Access granted. Biological considerations of the sword stars. Author. Director Pat Anders. Two different species of softens developed in this area of space. 81 Galatine II produced a species of humanoids. Two the Galatinian people were a near genetic match to terrestrial examples of Homo habilis, though how they found themselves this far away from Earth we do not know. Secase Epsilon 7, a small helium gas giant, produced a species of sulfur and silicon based softens. Their technological artifacts are much harder to acquire and decipher than the Galatinians. The Secase body plan is mostly empty space and a distributed neural network. Using methods of self-inflation and gas release they could rise, fall, or propel themselves in a particular direction. Secase orbital bases are difficult to explore as they are inhospitable to human life. There is a problem of sight to consider. We can bring back bits and pieces of the ruined civilizations, and that includes the remains of the dead. Yet we cannot visually observe the sky or the planets themselves without causing considerable psychological trauma. This has hindered our exploration efforts. Adapting to this, we have temporarily removed the eyes of several research teams to allow more in-depth exploration. The methods used are easily reversible and have helped us recover quite a bit of historical data from the Galatinian people. A brief history of the sword stars. Access granted. A brief history of the sword stars. Author. Director Kasher Gasser. It should be noted that the information gathered on the conflict between the Galatinian and Secase people were recovered mostly from a Galatinian perspective. This has introduced an unavoidable bias to this summary. 
The two systems are approximately 2.3 light years away from each other. Radio signals from the Sekes were detected fairly early in Galatinian technological development, though they were not understood to have a cosmic origin until later. The signals also ceased after around a century and a half, as the Sekes likely moved away from high leakage radio technology. Anomalies were known and accepted by the Galatinian people. At first, the Sekes were classified as an anomalous entity. However as more and more detail became known over the following years, the mundane nature of the Sekes was accepted by the people of 81 Galatine. The Galatinians purportedly sent an envoy and research vessel to Sekes Epsilon. It either did not arrive or did not survive the trip. This was attempted four additional times. These attempts took place over a period of 600 years. And during this time the Sekes people did not respond to radio messages, nor were any efforts carried out by the Sekes to make contact. Around 1200 years after the first detected radio emissions, a probe originating from Sekes Epsilon was detected on the outskirts of 81 Galatine. This probe was destroyed by a xenophobic faction of Galatinian civilization. Fearing retaliation. An armed fleet of Galatinian ships was sent to Sekes Epsilon. These ships were destroyed en route by a previously unknown weapon. The Galatinian government then began a number of projects to eliminate the assumed threat posed by the Sekes. After approximately 450 years, a significant Sekes fleet was detected en route to the home world of the Galatinians. All attempts to communicate with the Sekes fleet failed. As this fleet reached the halfway point between the two systems, both 81 Galatine and Sekes Epsilon spontaneously converted to neutron stars. The historical record ends here. It is unknown if this was a defensive move by the Galatinians or a final attack by the Sekes, but it seems fairly clear from government records that anomalous means of defense and offense were being developed by both sides of the conflict. The SCPV Token and SCPV Vonnegut. Access granted. The SCPV Token and SCPV Vonnegut. The exploration of both 81 Galatine and Sekes Epsilon has necessitated the utilization of two interstellar vessels. Following an 05 Council vote, the Token and Vonnegut were selected for this assignment due to their shipboard staff having the necessary expertise. Both are Bradbury class exploratory vessels with a max range of 45 light years per trip through a self generated way, and stutter warp drives for sublight travel. Each ship has a crew complement of 64. The Token specializes in Xenorchia linguistics. Three, as the Galtatinians were a traditional terrestrial civilization, many examples of their written language exist as well as significant recorded instances of their spoken language. 27 scientists were assigned to the project under the authority of Director Kasha Agasa. Recovery teams Gamma and Phi were assigned to help collect physical evidence from 81 Galatine. The shipboard AI is a level 6 intelligence using the pseudonym Brent. Upon landing on 81 Galatine 2, it became readily apparent that the Galatinians were not, in fact, completely deceased. The heads of the individuals were left intact and living, despite there not being any biological support systems remaining. The Vonnegut's specialization is Xenobiology and Xenanthropology. The Secassian civilization, technology, and communication networks are quite foreign to our experience, so a better understanding of these systems was the goal of the Vonnegut. 24 scientists under the authority of Director Pat Anders were assigned to the Vonnegut, along with a single recovery crew specializing in microgravity environs. The shipboard AI is a level 6 intelligence using the pseudonym Magil. It appears that the Secassians were not limited to travel via ship, and had methods of short-range near-planet orbital travel around Sekes Epsilon 7. Approximately 34,000 corpses were found in orbit of the gas giant, with fully intact silica sulfur neural nets. After information was compared with the token's recovery of Galatinian heads, these neural nets were tested for activity, and found to be fully functional. Since the Secassian people lived primarily in the upper layers of the gas giant Sekes Epsilon 7, 
it is believed that the majority of their population, estimated to number in the trillions, are unrecoverable. Level 3 access required. Alert. Situation in progress. The following briefing will be expanded as more information is discovered. Report on the SCPV token. The token reported an info breach approximately three hours before contact was lost. A member of the recovery team was eating in the mess hall when he used a fork to scoop out both eyes. He was restrained, but the physical damage was quite extensive. The chief medical officer estimated approximately six weeks of recovery at a minimum. Roughly two hours after this incident, the captain reported other strange behavior from several crew members. Before contact was lost, the captain displayed symptoms of paranoia and anxiety. She did not listen to commands from headquarters and cut all communication shortly thereafter. The severity of the SCP-001 effect increases with proximity to the anomaly. Prior testing indicates it is wholly possible that the crew of the token are suffering from severe paranoia and hallucinations at this point if fully exposed. Under normal circumstances, this would be impossible, given the safeguards we've put into place. A secondary anomaly or a less than complete understanding of the core anomaly may have led to failures in our safeguards. The Vonnegut was redirected to act as a recovery or rescue vessel, as it was the closest ship and also had experience dealing with the anomaly. However, shortly after the Vonnegut docked with the token, it too lost contact with mission control. Report on the SCPV Vonnegut. A rescue mission was prepared aboard the Vonnegut. The rescue crew was waiting in Cargo Bay 3 for the docking process to complete. During the approach, various communication signals were received from the token. These signals originated from both the ship's crew and computer systems, though none were coherent. Approximately 12 minutes after the first signal was received, a mechanical failure of the primary and secondary airlocks of Cargo Bay 3 vented six crew members and a member of the recovery team into space. Recovery of the bodies was tasked as a priority. However, the secondary rescue team's environmental suits began to malfunction immediately upon leaving the ship. All remaining members of the Vonnegut's recovery team, including those sent to rescue the previous team, suffocated during these malfunctions. At this point, the command and control center aboard the Vonnegut reported a logic fault in the primary computer systems. The Vonnegut began to suffer ship-wide system failures over the next several hours. During this time the airlocks of the Vonnegut were inoperable. This precluded any further attempts at rescuing those aboard the token. A final distress call indicated a failure of the life support systems. Under normal circumstances, this would allow 36 hours to effect a rescue. If airlock and door control have been compromised, this estimate may be meaningless. Level 5 access required. Access granted. Situation update. The SCPV Asimov and the SCPV Clark are within range to effect a rescue. However the Clark is 26 hours out. The Asimov has began casting the appropriate spells to travel to the area but is waiting for confirmation from the O5 Council on how to proceed. Question before the Council. Should we order the rescue of the token and Vonnegut? Council vote summary. Member. I. Nay. O5-01. I. O5-02. Nay. O5-03. I. O5-04. Nay. O5-05. Nay. O5-06, nay. O5-07, I. O5-08, nay. O5-09, I. O5-10, I. O5-11, I. O5-12, nay. Status. Incomplete. O5-13 has not voted. Click here to vote I on the motion. Review SCP-001. You have received a message over the Ansible network from 498 light years away. This message includes audio playback. I know 05-12 was lobbying pretty hard to abandon our people, but I appreciate your making the right decision. The token is carrying some of the greatest minds in Archeoxana linguistics.
which, to be fair, isn't a field with that many experts in the first place. So, every person we can pull out of this is another decade we're not gonna be set back. If you need anything from Sector 1, including additional ships, just let me know. I'll be moving rescue service ships to the border between our sectors. DR. Jeremiah Samirian, Ethics Committee Managing Director and 05 1. Launch Rescue. On the 5th of April 2063, the SCP via Simov activated a self generated way and was transported approximately 41 light years into the orbit of 81 Galatine 2. Near the last known location of the SCPV Tokin and Vonnegut. The Asimov's initial survey of the SCPV Vonnegut indicated that there were no longer any individuals aboard that ship. Six escape pods were recovered from the Vonnegut, but none contained living individuals. The Asimov then approached the Tokin from the starboard side and utilized shipboard sensors to detect signs of life. It was determined that approximately 130% of the ship's known crew were clustered around the central reactor. It was believed that survivors from the Vonnegut make up the unexpected excess life signs. Due to the potential danger, both anomalous and otherwise, it was decided that an exploratory drone would be used rather than rescue personnel. Calvin 6, an Arrowway class treaded survey drone was deployed and the Asimov utilized its stutter warp drive to move a safe distance away from the token. Communications with Calvin 6 was established over an isolated band of the Ansible network. The drone was then directed to breach the hull of one of the token's starboard side escape pods. Initializing primary systems. Loading OSCP. Searching Ansible network for signal. Signal found. Utilizing signal band 1326. Loading Calvin 6 personality core. Loading command override from 05 13. Loading 05 13 2987 AI interface. Hello user. I am Calvin 6. I hope you are having a lovely day. Preloading laser cutter optimizations. Loading standard rule set regarding human life. Loading standard rule set regarding anomalous encounters. Let's rescue the Tokens crew together. I am excited to work with an O5 council member. 5 hours, 13 minutes, and 31 seconds. Calvin 6 begins to cut into escape pod 17. 5 hours, 14 minutes, and 28 seconds. The laser cutter is successful in breaching escape pod 17. There is a release of air and Calvin 6 pushes into the pod. The drone then immediately deploys sealant gel to prevent the further loss of atmosphere. 5 hours, 14 minutes, and 59 seconds direct observation of the environment is now allowed as per extant containment procedures. A command is sent from a Simov mission control to activate the drone's video equipment in order to better observe the situation. 5 hours, 15 minutes. And one second, the drone's AI briefly considers the potential anomalous threat in this context. Five hours, 15 minutes, and four seconds, the drone activates a device override and refuses the activation command. Five hours, 15 minutes, and nine seconds, a Simov mission control acknowledges the refusal and sends a command requesting full deployment of non visual sensors. Five hours, 15 minutes, and 36 seconds, the activation of the full sensor suite, absent visuals, is completed. An approximate reconstruction of the visuals are processed on board the Asimov and translated into visual descriptors. 5 hours, 15 minutes, and 58 seconds, the drone opens the escape pod door. The door is slow to respond, but eventually opens. There is a loud scraping noise as this occurs. Sounds of screaming can be heard inside the ship. An individual lies motionless, slumped against the far wall. The lights in this area are experiencing power fluctuations. Various wires and paneling are scattered across the floor. Heavy damage to the internal structure of the ship is clearly visible. 5 hours, 16 minutes, and 7 seconds. The drone begins to move towards far wall in order to examine the injured individual. 
The individual appears to be conscious, though bleeding profusely from its head. There are holes where the individual's eyes should be, and the individual begins to place a nearby loose wire into the empty left eye socket. What are you doing here? Error. Due to the anomaly's properties of the document see wiki for full access to documentation. Footnotes. 1. Informally identified in the amateur astronomy community as the Sword Stars. From Earth these stars appear 3.6 degrees below the Sword of Orion. 2. Specifically the Galatine Homo Habilis. 3. The study of ancient alien languages.